Our European partners, you, deserve enormous credit for showing the resolve you have shown and the common purpose you have summoned in order to stand up to Russia's repeated aggression. And I am confident that Europe and the United States are going to continue to stand united, both in sustaining sanctions for as long as they are necessary and in providing needed assistance to Ukraine until the sovereignty and integrity of Ukraine is protected through the full implementation of the Minsk Agreement. Now, again and again, we have made it clear, and I make it clear again here today, sanctions are not an end unto themselves. Witness what we succeeded in doing in the context of the Iran nuclear agreement. But we shouldn't forget why they were imposed in the first place, to stand up for Ukraine's fundamental rights, rights of international norms that have been accepted ever since World War II, that were part of what that great battle was about. Russia has a simple choice, fully implement Minsk or continue to face economically damaging sanctions. And the path to sanctions relief is clear. Withdraw weapons and troops from the Donbass, ensure that all Ukrainian hostages are returned, allow full humanitarian access to occupied territories, which, by the way, is required by international law and by several United Nations resolutions, support free, fair, and internationally monitored elections in the Donbass under Ukrainian law, and restore Ukraine's control of its side of the international border, which belongs to it. Put plainly, Russia can prove by its actions that it will respect Ukraine's sovereignty just as it insists on respect for its own.